Tonight's top story, the war against ISIS despite airstrikes and international outrage against the Islamic State fighters while the terror group is overrunning Iraqi forces, slowly marching towards, uh, well, Baghdad's doorstep. Alarming developments piled up over the weekend and since then as well. Iraqi forces threaten to flee if the U.S. military doesn't intervene. Iraq's Anbar province says they need U.S. ground troops to halt ISIS's rapid and relentless assault. Editor-in-chief of TruthRevolt.org, Ben Shapiro, joins me now from Los Angeles with the latest. Uh, Ben, it seems like every day there's a new development with ISIS taking ground that we just weren't expecting when these these airstrikes happened. I thought the point was to try and stop them, not just help them move along. Well, uh, here's the problem that I think a lot of folks in the West don't understand about ISIS or Hamas or any of these other terrorist groups. If the West launches airstrikes and those airstrikes do not succeed in actually not only blunting an assault but reversing gains, then people declare victory. It actually makes recruitment easier, and that's what's happened with ISIS. Because the United States and its allies have undertaken half-hearted airstrikes, the, and because ISIS has continued to forge forth, the, the idea is that the, the, it makes it easier for them to pick up followers, easier for them to pick up recruits. It actually builds what they're doing as opposed to reducing what they're doing. And when you have the president of the United States out there every single day saying, we're not rethinking strategy, we're, we're still going to continue pursuing our, our coalition that, that is not a coalition with our boots on the ground that are not boots on the ground, uh, ISIS has to be pretty confident at this point that the West isn't going to do anything. Well, I think because they're not serious. And look, you and I, I think, disagree on whether boots on the ground should happen. Should there be lots of uh, uh, American and allied troops sent in to fight this battle uh, with infantry divisions? That's not, my, uh, that's not my preference. But I do have a problem with saying up front, we will never do this. Now, let's go fight them. And by the way, we're not really going to bomb you that hard. It's kind of like telling the, your opponent, I'm only going to hit you five times and then I'll go away. They're just going to try and wait you out. And I think this is the problem that progressives have when they discuss military intervention. It's why they keep, we keep being asked, what is the exit plan? Why would you come up with an exit plan when what you're doing so far hasn't been working? Well, this is exactly it. I mean, I don't think anybody really wants to see American or Canadian troops on the ground in Iraq at this point or Syria. But here's the problem. When you say to folks in the region, look, we need boots on the ground and those boots on the ground are going to be you. And by the way, if things go wrong, we're out. I mean, we're not going to be doing anything to help you. We're not going to send boots on the ground to help save you. We're not going to launch heavy airstrikes. We're not even going to coordinate with you. I mean, the United States actually ended up bombing the Free Syrian Army just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, why in the world would anybody say, okay, yeah, we'll be your boots on the ground? Who would actually want to ally with the United States at this point, considering how rapidly the United States pulls out of engagements? The fact is that we're, we're now counting on the Kurds to go up against ISIS, and the Kurds are just saying, leave us alone. We're in our area. All we want is just to, to have this area and be left alone. And the last couple of times we trusted you guys, you screwed us. So why exactly would we turn around now and, and do all your dirty work for you? Yeah. The, uh, the fact is that with our respective air forces, with all the different countries that have come in so far, Canada is sending six CF-18s, a small contingent compared to what the Americans already have there. You've got the Brits, you've got the French going in. There should be enough airplanes, enough bombardment going on to flatten ISIS. But they seem to be doing, I hate to agree with John McCain, but they seem to be doing what John McCain called pinprick operations. And I think that is part of the problem. This is not shock and awe. This is not, uh, my friend John Robson calls it uh, the Jacksonian school of foreign policy. Bomb your enemy back into uh, the Stone Age and then leave. That's what they should have done from the beginning. It should have been over. And the guys at ISIS should have been saying, let's not start this up again. That'll hurt if they come back. Well, clearly they've had the opportunity to do so. When ISIS first crossed the border, we were talking about a grand total of between five and 10,000 ISIS fighters who crossed the border from Syria into Iraq. And they've taken over half the country at this point. I mean, it's now you have something that's, that's a lot more difficult, which is you have ISIS embedded in civilian areas. Now, the president of the United States apparently doesn't care about that. He actually waived regulations in the United States that, that prevent the, the creation of civilian casualties. He actually waived those because he doesn't want to be held responsible uh, for the Air Force actually hitting civilians. But the fact is that this is a half-hearted attempt. It always was a half-hearted attempt. President Obama does not see ISIS as a real threat. And here is the bottom line. If you see ISIS as a threat, then you will do whatever is necessary to neutralize the threat. If you don't see them as a threat, then you're not going to really be willing to do anything beyond just putting your finger in the wind and waiting for the polls to change. I want to ask you about the reaction of progressive America because uh, all during the, the Bush-Iraq war, uh, you had Code Pink and all the progressive leftist groups coming out and denouncing it. I'm not hearing that out of the U.S., but now that we have a conservative government here in Canada, while well, the progressives, including the politicians, are saying, we can't be involved in combat operations, let's just feed the refugees and give them blankets. 
How's progressive America reacting to President Obama bombing another country? Well, they've basically been silent because the president keeps saying over and over and over again that we're not going to go beyond that. And because he keeps saying that, he's hoping to tamp down his leftist base. And they figure, OK, well, you know, if we drop a little bit of military ordinance on these folks, then whatever, we can live with that. But as long as we're not going to get dragged into any sort of engagement, then then that's OK. If, if, I do wonder if, if they would be quite so uh, silent about all of this if we had a Republican president, considering that the president of the United States recently announced that we were going to be keeping 10,000 troops in Afghanistan basically indefinitely. And if you've that got, had been George W. Bush, then I think that might have changed things. You've got 4,000 fighting Ebola in Africa, and you've got uh, this going on. But don't worry, this is only the seventh country that he's bombed since winning the Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, ben, stick around. We want to chat with you about why the Pentagon may not be as serious as it should be. They've, they've got other priorities.